This is Funkry Cole's Toughness Resin, and I'm gonna be trying this out today. How's it going everybody? Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy, and if you're looking for a resin that is best used for miniatures or things that you plan on handling over and over again, and you wanna give them a little bit more toughness, then a tough resin is what you're gonna need. It's usually referred to as an ABS-like resin. But I'm gonna be trying this out from Front Creek Hole. This is the gray version of their toughness resin. There's also a white version available. And if you click the link in the description, it'll take you to Amazon where you can purchase it. As I record this right now, the price is $41.99 for a one kilogram bottle, but then there's also a coupon that you can click the checkbox for and it'll save you some money, give you a little bit of a discount. So I'm gonna pour some of this into my printer. I'm gonna start by printing some miniatures and meet me right back here and I'll tell you all about how tough it is and how flexible our parts can get with this resin. So when it comes to tough resin, the biggest question in the room is how tough is it? And I'm gonna do some practical real world tests to see how these figures are gonna stand up under normal conditions, especially when it comes to miniatures and the way that you handle them. You might knock them off the table, so we're gonna see if anything breaks when I knock them on the ground. And I'm also gonna do a little bendy test on some of the thinner parts, all right? But before I get into all that, I do wanna talk about the quality of the models that this resin was able to produce as you look at them here. And as you can see, these models look really good. Very nicely defined. I do think the gray color really helps to bring out everything. And that's why I like gray so much. The smoother areas, you can see the definition when it comes to the wrinkles and the recessed areas and all of the spiky bits on these orcs just came out nice and sharp. And the resin has done a fantastic job at recreating these models. One thing that I did notice when I was handling these miniatures and the way that they feel and the weight to them, they almost have a somewhat plastic feel to them. It's not exactly like plastic, but it feels a little bit different compared to most other resins that I've used before, especially when it comes to these wings on this dragon. As I feel these wings, they don't have like that typical borderline brittly type of feeling that I get with normal resins that I've used before. There's a smoothness to this and it's actually kind of nice to, to feel, you know, in the hands. The spiky bits still feel spiky and they're still pretty sharp, but I don't know, there's just something about this. As I was handling them to glue them on the base and everything, the first thing that came to my mind is, these feel a little bit different and maybe it's all in my head, but it's definitely something that stood out to me and I thought that it'd be important for you to know. Now, in addition to being tough, this type of resin is supposed to take thinner parts of a model and make them bendable so that you can uh, bend them more before they break. And although many of these models are pretty stiff in the way that they're designed, like these spike bits here on this guy. They're not going to bend, but there are some parts on him that will. For example, he has these little arrows that are sticking out of him, and these arrows are kind of bendy because they're quite thin. So let's see how much I can flex these arrows before they break. All right, so you can see this little arrow right there. All right, so maybe you can see me as I bend it, it's very small, bending it. All right, so it did break, but I was able to flex it almost in half to this piece of armor right here before it finally broke. Here's another one right there on his arm, giving it a little bit of a flex. This one is not as flexible, but as you can see, I can bend it, I have it bent all the way back to his arm and it has not broken yet. It doesn't come, well, it's almost coming back to its original form, but not quite, I have to bring it back up. But as you can see, all right, it has finally broken, but I gave it a few flexes before it broke. Some other parts on him are kind of stiff, like this is stiff, so these parts are going to break off. But I do have another model here, got this female orc here with this staff. And the staff is not super thin, but I should still be able to give it some kind of a bend. So let's start at the tip here. So you see, I'm kind of moving it here. 
Now this isn't magic, it's not a rubber band, so it's not like it's not going to break. But I have it bent all the way back to touching her head and it has not broken yet. In most situations, you're not going to be doing this with your model. You're not gonna be bending things like this, trying to break it. But you can see the flexibility in this. And I think that's very important with, an, with a tough resin slash ABS-like resin. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how the flex is with some of these thinner parts. But now we have to try the drop test. This is my garage floor. It is a hard floor, concrete. And when it comes to testing out these miniatures with a drop test, this is a typical situation. So let's assume that it's on this, uh, this dresser right here. And this is about three and a half to four feet high. And let's say you just have your miniature and you accidentally drop them. Let's see what's gonna happen. So let's see, three, two, one, drop. Nothing, <clears throat> nothing is broken on them. Let's try it again. Three, two, one, oops, nothing there. We'll try it again, three, two, one. All right, I think something may have <clears throat> broken at that point. I'm looking over this figure, it sounded like something might have broken um, right here. It was the horn on his shield. So that broke after the third drop. Let's try a higher drop up from about six feet in the air, same spot. Three, two, one, drop. Nothing, everything is still the same. He still has the spike on the shield. Three, two, one, drop. Sounds like something might have broken on this one. Yeah, so it looks like the other horn part of the shield right over there broke. And let's do it one more time. Three, two, one, drop. And that time, the sword had broken off. So it took multiple drops in order to break off those stiffer uh, pieces. But we still have some other tests to do. Pretty much the same type of a test. I'm gonna grab another miniature. This time, let's go for this big guy here. All right, here's the counter test. One, two, three, drop. I think something broke off of him, but I'm not too sure what it is, but the figure at large is still intact. Let's drop him again, three, two, one. And now higher up in the sky, three, two, one. Three, two, one. And three, two, one. All right, so after multiple repeated drops, let's take a look at this guy. The figure itself is just fine, but some of the spiky bits that was on his armor, like right up here, the spiky bits broke off in some areas. This is a printing error right here. This was a layer separation, and a part of that uh, layer had broken off. So if that was uh, printed correctly, then nothing would have happened at all. So this survived just fine. And we're going to do one last test using this female auric that we tested before. All right, three, two, one. We're just going to start high in the sky. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. And three, two, one. All right, let's take a look at her now. So on her, the only thing that broke off was the tip of her staff, the part that I bent back um, a little bit earlier. So I assume that was already compromised. The horns right here are still intact and the figure itself is still intact as far as the arms and the legs and her hair, absolutely fine. There's no damage here. The cape is also fine. So these are just pretty typical tests when it comes to miniatures. So when you drop them, you can be rest assured, you drop them on concrete, they're most likely going to be just fine. So there you have it. The quality test as well as the toughness test for the Fun Creek Cold Tough Resin. I'll give you my final thoughts about this resin. I think that the models came out looking absolutely fantastic. They look great. And when you have a resin that helps the figures to look as good as they do, it really, really helps that they have that extra durability as you, as you just saw there with really typical, normal, everyday situations when it comes to dropping. I don't anticipate you dropping figures from a three-story window, but when it comes to them falling off of a table or something like that, or if you're carrying them and you happen to drop them, even if you're tall, you'll see that the figures themselves, for the most part, are going to be just fine. 
you might break off some really rigid, long, thin piece that doesn't have any flexibility to it like we saw with the swords. But even then, it took more than a few drops in order for something to break. So I think that that gives you more assurance that if you do have an accident, your figures are most likely going to be okay for the most part. But to get that kind of toughness comes with a price. Last time I checked this resin on Amazon was selling for about $42. Now that's definitely on the high end of resin, um, even when it comes to ABS-like resins. It's a little bit more expensive than some of the other things out there. Though I did see that there's a coupon on Amazon that you can use, and if it's not there, I'm gonna see if I have a coupon that I can give you, and that will be linked down in the description so it can save you a little bit of money that way. But it really just kind of comes down to after you've seen this video and you've made the decision for yourself, is it worth that extra price for you to have a model that you spend a lot of time prepping and priming and painting and you really, really like it and you want to make sure that if you have an accident that the figure is going to be mostly okay. Can't guarantee that nothing is going to break, but you'll know that it will be tougher than just your regular resins. And maybe that's worth it to you to spend a little bit extra money for that security and for that peace of mind. So I hope that that helps you out in your purchasing decision and whether you want to purchase the Fun Creed Code Tough Resin. And if you do, remember, check the link down in the description so that you can see if there's a coupon code there that you can use in order to save you some money. And if you buy it on Amazon, also so be on the lookout for any additional savings that may be located there. Thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.